We fill our bellies with something besides turtle, old sport. The ships come in. <laughs> Get yourself a grand and we'll have a party. Hi, I'm back at sunset. Satisfactory cargo this trip, Captain? Ebony and spices. What's news outside? Wars and rumors. No, no, no. Gossip. Tidbits of scandal. Something huge. 
Fred Butts at Macassar found a pearl worth a couple of thousand and left his wife. That American widow at Titi is about to have... Oh, that's not news. <laughs> still here? He is. How did he ever light on this particular fly speck on the map? Escaping from something or other, I suppose. <laughs> it's a bit light in the head, if you ask me. Aren't we all here? It's the heat, is it? You're pretty easy on him, Mr. Crichton. This is a lonely station, Captain. I suppose I'm jealous of the reckless way he squanders the priceless treasure of life. What the devil is that? Why didn't you... Until sinking hard. What's going on out there? Celebration? Oh, ship comes in. Why, oh, you know them. They're like a lot of giddy kids. Huh? Oi. Here it is, Ginger, on the dock. Edward C. Wilson, Esquire. You know, I'm blessed if when you get this B.A. do, I don't wonder if I oughtn't to rise and curse. If you don't mind, I'll just pop out the back way. Oh, but wait, wait. I was going to catch that for you, Jim. Come here. Oh. Endorse the chair. See? He's all ready for it. Eight pounds. That's 72 gilded exactly this time. Thank you. What's the idea? Orang, orang, bully muscle. Saya, tuan besar. A shopkeeper's on a place. Sit down. I got a date, Mr. Gray. Sit down. It's a dirty trick. You are the only money, don't you? Tell them to present their chips of Mr. Wilson's in there. Are you my friend or are you not? I'll never trust you again. Here! Here! How much? Sixty-three gulden, Tun Bishop. You can wait for the money outside in the club. Now be a reasonable man. Pay them, get it off your chest and off mine. And leave me with only a quid to my name? Why, you little tin god that makes me you something. Hey there! Okay! You're a lost sheep, if ever I saw one. Going to pieces under that cocky hat of yours like a rotten pub. If you ever had a backbone, he's all been dissolved in booze. Well, I'm sick and tired of your drunken abroads. And I... Oh. Here, you come up to my house tonight and have half a dozen bottles of beer. I accept your apology. I beg your pardon. It's all right. 
see you tonight for the beer. Hey, uh, I suppose we'll be having uh, company. Oh, you do. Yeah. Here, that way. Cure impossible. Yeah, and you, my dear sir, tossing me to those thieves are a traitor to our race. Come gathering, not in May, on a cold and frosty morning. There. Sit down. Now, children, it's good, but not good enough. Once more from the beginning. One, two. Here we come gathering, not in May, not in May, not in May. Here we come down. Serena, you're not paying attention. Stand up and let me hear you say the word gathering. 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 No. Gathering. Gaz. Gaz. No, Nyanya Jones. Banyak Susa. Too difficult. Difficult. Not deep. The word is difficult. Nothing worth having is easy. Of course it's difficult. Sit down. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. <laughs> now we'll sing the song. Pay particular attention to the vowels. We'll start with the second verse. Ready? <laughs> Serena, Titi, and, uh, and Isa for nuts in May. Ready? One, two. We will have Serena, Titi, and Isa for nuts in May. Nuts in May, nuts in May. We will have Serena, Titi, and Isa for nuts in May. It is difficult for you, but for me too sometimes, you know. <laughs> Exercise books. We'll now take down the following lines written by Stephen, who was a very great poet and a very good man, although he was born in Scotland. There's so much bad in the best of us and so much good in the worst of us but it little behoves any of us to talk about the rest of us. Oh, no, dear Joe! Serena, I'm afraid you'll never realize what a good deed you have done. First, we must find the police and put an end to this wickedness. 
Barmaid's eyes are blue. Not black at home, in England. Where it's cold, her cheeks are red as apples. You can fill your lungs with clean, bright cold in England. You paint pictures with your frozen breath. But your boots make music in the snow. In winter time. At home. In England. It's pretty. Even if I cannot understand it. Took that child under my wing. Can't you corked up hens stop scratching at other people's business? Oh, oh. oh it's her fault that she hasn't said in there with her gym set in there. Madam, would you kindly remove your little tea kettle to another stove? I give this man a chance. Arrest him! Fellow men, spiritually or surgically, that you have tried my patience beyond endurance. Oh, you should be on your knees. Asleep! You ought to be on your feet. Grant me patience. These people have no sense of moral responsibility or decency.
If it wasn't for you, Dudley, I think I'd give up. Has the sergeant told you? Told me what? I should have thought in the ordinary course of routine, sir, you'd have been acquainted with affairs in your own district. I do not encourage my staff to drop in at my private house, except on matters of importance. But this is far more than important. It concerns the... The very salvation of the whole community, I need hardly add, this has to do with that renegade they call... Into Ted. Eh? Another of his revolting outbreaks. Drunk again, He wrecked a shop and half killed the proprietor. But where is he? In jail, of course. My sister and I... Ah, your sister? Yes. Yes? We feel very strongly that something ought to be done. Now, uh, now do sit down, Mr. No. Jones. Thank you. This man is a public scandal and if... Forgive me. But have you and your sister, in addition to complaint, ever offered him a helping hand? Oh, you won't let us come near him every time... No one me. appreciates more than I do the good work that you and your sister are doing, Mr. Jones. But are you sure you exercise your calling with all possible tact? The situation is beyond tact. I shall naturally listen to the evidence against him and to his defense. There can be no defense. My dear sir, I administered justice according to the laws of my government. But, Mr. Adieu. Mother, I beg your pardon, Mr. Groyster, for uh, speaking. Good evening. Now dry up your blubbering monkey. You can't even give me a money. Be still. How are you, Ambaza? Sit down. How are you, Ambaza? I'm in the cart, all right, but I was blind. Look at the provocation I had. That old clothesline ties me up in knots every time she comes in the window. Meneer Controller, if I may interfere. Owen, I can defend myself. Ginger, uh, Wilson. After all, you are the prisoner here and not the prosecutor. If you follow. Now, Miss Jog. Miss Jog in the manger. Wilson, yes. well, how can a man keep still faced with her? I can't. Evil communications, corrupt good manners. Natural. But there are other cases to be disposed of. Now proceed, if you please. Oh, I have nothing against him personally. He can be as insolent to me as he chooses. That doesn't worry me. But he shall not be insolent. Miss Jones. Not only his slavery to drink, though that's a public scandal against which I, as a woman, as well as a worker here for spiritual betterment, have a right to protest. But yesterday I found him with one of my own pupils. Fighting her to, to be wicked. There's no one to stop him. I tell you, his example here utterly destroys our efforts. Mine and my brother's to... to... Well, what, Miss Jo? To help these people to find the truth. They're such children in there, so easily influenced. How are we to guide them if this so-called white man mocks at us? We are armed, I suppose. But by their fruits, ye shall know them. You sentimental suction pump. Taking all the fun out of life. That man is a peril to women. You're a thorn in the flesh of man. Will! He's still drunk. No! It's not drink you're afraid of. It's a bit of normal virility in a man. Mr. Greuter, I am not on trial here. Uh, Miss Joe. Understanding is a great thing, isn't it? Everybody. The Calvestrat in Amsterdam, Piccadilly in London, and those leafy avenues in Paris. On that little street that scared me, I, I forget the name, in New York. Everybody is flotsam and jets. Not knowing why they're here or where they're going. But behaving as they do. And very oddly, too, sometimes. Because they're human. I'm afraid I bored you. It's my English education. Regarding Edward C. Wilson now. Miss Jones, what do you suggest? Oh, I 
do try to look on the brighter side of things. And I suppose there must be some good in a man who's kind to his dog and keeps his moustache tidy. But he must be taught a lesson. You have something in your mind? Deportation. I'm sorry, but it's necessary. Yeah. Thank you, Miss Jones. Thank you, Minaire. She's right, you know. Deport me. Haven't you been idle, incorrigible, drunk, and immoral here? I pay for the Chinaman's stuff I broke, if you'll give me time. You'll pay for the damage, all right. But it's me who'll give you the time. And that will be one month in jail. Great here. Merck Hepburnus. Say out to one bazaar. It's only a month. I protest. It's ridiculous. If you'll excuse me, you Frau. Let he be deported. My sentence, sir. Send him away so that we can cultivate our garden in peace. No! You see? Yes. I see all right. Enter this sentence. Three months. Me? Hard labor. What you say? On the road, gang. Ho! Oh, Don't you quite... Last day of I'm sure you don't appreciate this. Send Tuan Wilson here. Die out, Tuan Bazaar. Mr. Greuter, you can't leave things like this. I... You have your obligations. Obligations to us, too. We well, work hard, Mr. Grossman. Awfully hard. You must know that. Quiet. Oh, and must talk to you. I'm a little emotional, I'm afraid. Indeed. Wilson in the road gang. Have you considered what the social effect on the natives will be? It will undermine our authority. You must see that it's best to deport him. Pluck him out. Like an offending eye. Heaven knows. Uh, pardon me. I've promised myself I'd deport him often enough. I knew you'd see the light. I've just sent for Mr. Wilson. Come on. I can't bear to be near that man. But, Ma, I... Sergeant, you may go. Come here, Wilson. Come here. So, you were going to kill me, eh? Not swallowing the words precisely. I was mad for a minute. I got over it. That's very kind of you. It does stick in my craw, you giving way to that twitty twerp. Ooh. That hangover's beating its wings in my head. I may never sit down. If my he head wasn't so vacant, there wouldn't be any room for the wings to beat. <laughs> oh, thank you. Do you know what I am, Mr. Controller? Yes, crazy. Beer? Don't mind if I do. She 
Vega. Thanks. You know, I don't know what to do with you. Neither did anybody at home. I was a problem child. Hmm. I'm half in mind to deport you. I'm glad to have met you, Controller. When do I start? Oh, I didn't suggest it. They did. Do you mean... You don't want to kick me out? Well, I'm lonely enough as it is. No. Can't you control yourself? I've made practically a companion of you. You're behaving like this. It, it hurts. I'll do that time on the road, gang. No, you. no. It's your duty to punish me. A white man on the road, gang. Hey. Oh, I never thought of that. Couldn't you, um, just put me in jail here hmm. and have my government hem and haw at me for feeding an Englishman for three months? No. Of course. Here it is. Think, man. I'm trying to. So am I. Mm. Oh. Mr. Bright, I do think of something. I ought to get back to jail. I've got Richard Blessy. I shall send you to Ego Island. There's no punishment. Yeah, he will. There is no alcohol on it. I've got a bit of that, please. He's going to sign the pledge tomorrow anyway. Stop yawning. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. This morning, I sentenced you, Edward C. Wilson. Here, what does that C stand for, Ed? Lord. That's been bothering me for now. I sentenced you, Edward Claude Wilson, to three months hard labor. It will be worked out on Ego Island. Selfish swine, that fellow, charging off the way go like that. Beer has to have company to be enjoyed. Dress, what for? 
on this night of Manton Bizarre, officer with Mr. and Mrs. Jones. Call me. Now, now, Mr. Jones isn't well either today, and you wouldn't want me to leave him all alone, would you? Bye, bye, bye. Nanya. Come down, Fletcher. She must be kept absolutely quiet. Fire on you. But no one here. Makasi. Uh, Nani and John in the hospital. Two in the dark and two and John on the bed. Oh, then, then say I wouldn't dream of the stairs. Oh, say. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Miss John. I was just saying how disappointed. How nice of you not to forget our small festivities. But how could I? But uh, do you mind not smoking? It makes my brother feel sick at the best of times. Oliver, throw it away. And you must keep the stones at Mr. Jones's feet quite hot, you know. Oh, it's nothing serious with your brother, I trust. Mm, just a touch of malaria again. Oh, then I wouldn't dream of inconvenience. Oh, it isn't at all inconvenient. I'll leave the door ajar, dear, then I can chaperone you. Yes, dear. Now, wouldn't it be better if I came to dinner another night? Oh, I never heard of such a thing. Now, do sit down. I've got a real English dinner for you tonight. A boiled fish, a risotto, and tapioca pudding. Tapioca? Oh, Tapioca. That's my favorite pudding. What is it, Sergeant? The jungle was passed on my petite gekomen met hier and said that the kapala al da, seer and se beek heeft, da, seer zeek, he heeft een dokter nodig. Uh, what is it? The chief on my petite has a little appendix, that's all. Appendicitis? But it must be operated on at once. But the appendicitis or not, since your brother is unable to go to him, I'm afraid his appendix will have to wait. But I shall go myself. Oh, yes, I know you're qualified, but you can't remove an appendix, can you? Well, help don't do scores of times. But an acute appendix is nothing to dawdle over. The poor soul might die. But Matutiti is 80 kilometers away and... What? My brother will give me his blessing, I'm sure. Oh, that dog, I'm thankful that woman's not sister to me. Sergeant. Germany. You will escort Nanya Jones in the government lodge. Germany. Get out that notebook of yours and... Put this order down. On your return, you will pass Ego Island. Why are we stopping here? I must not tell you. Pick up Juan Wilson at Ego. Not tell Nonya Joe. That's done. The Maputi Pichif you cut open. Now, well, hey, Nonya. I may say that the operation was successful. And of course, the little community there is stronger now in its safe. Yes, ma'am. Will Hendrik be very much longer, do you think? Would you like me to play for you, Noya, with my guitar? No, thank you. I'm not very musical, I'm afraid, in the primitive sense. I shall walk, I think. Nature is so natural, isn't it? Yes, Noya.
see you. An degenerate punishment indeed. More like conspiracy. Come up! Come up! Come up! Living in pagan idleness instead of reforming yourself by responsibility and trust. As much background as you have conscience. Well, you've had your chance to reform and lost it. And you'll be deported if I have to go to the government over the head of the controller. Aren't you listening to me? Now, Nunya, you want to see the done, please. It's have very narrow here. I can see that. Sailing, sailing over the bounding main. Toss me up there, Chad. There'll be no drinking while I'm on board. Did you hear me? Madam, they can hear you in Honolulu. Hi. Hi. Come here, Chad. Spare time in the morning. Morning? Yes. Well, we should have to wade ashore from the reef. Does that mean we shall have to stay here all night? We'll have to damn it for you. I'm going to take off my pants! Take your skirt off to dry.
Three months on milk. <laughs> <laughs> Wilson! Wilson! Oh, there you are. 
Mr. Kardashian, you insolent woman, how do you do? When I heard that you were here, I simply had to come. Wilson, thank you, thank you. You've done a great and noble thing. Here, yeah, now, now, easy man. That malaria is not out of your system yet. Martha is right. There is so much good in the worst of us. I've misjudged you, and I beg your forgiveness from the bottom of a very full heart. He is feverish. I thought you were the worst of men, but you had my sister at your mercy. And you spared her. We see him in his true colors now at last, don't we, sir? God bless and guard you. Good night. Oh, excuse me for dashing away so quickly, sir. My sister's not quite herself. Thank you again, Edward. <laughs> Didn't he call me, Edward? What does the jack in the box mean? <laughs> he was thanking you because when you had her in your power of Ed Island last night. I did what? You respected the virtue of Miss Jones. Me? <laughs> and her? You and Master John. Well, well. Yes, it's an insult. You can take it back. <laughs> yes, it must be. Must be one love. Yes? I better get drunk. I better stay drunk for a while. That's why you sent for him. Well, I'm not further interested in that pilgrim's progress upward or down, if you'll excuse me. Yes, but if he could just once see what home life would be I've not like. seen Wilson since your brother met him at my house. But I'll tell you right now, he fit into home life about as well as a poor... You have prejudice. Prejudice? Yes, I dare say I am. But nevertheless, he's worthless. No one is entirely worthless. And now, more than ever, we have an obligation to save him from himself. I must be off now. Oh, Mr. Bronte, you must have some tea. Owen will be back from the hospital soon, and uh, I'll bake some of those crumpets we had last time you were here. Remember? Yes, I do indeed. But if you'll excuse me. Mr. Grotter, please, please help us. Help me. What can I do for that poor soul? Well, from what I hear, all that he really needs is a bath. I see it now. He refuses to come to us because he was ashamed. Of what? Of his appearance. He couldn't very well come to dine with us without some decent clothes. Oh, that's the Englishman in him, of course. Of course. Well, I must now go to my office. <laughs> Is Edward Wilson his real name? Good afternoon. Mr. Groit? Look here. Miss George. He's just a rolling stone. And they gather no months. Edward Wilson will.
You? Now what are you up to? You meddlesome medic, get out of my house. House? <coughs> Robert thought you might not be offended if he lent you these clothes so that you could come and dine with us. You did, did he? Well, I bet you put him up to it. Of the last thing you did to me, do you imagine I'd ever have anything to do with you? Be quiet! <coughs> you two! Did you step on something? Mr. Wilson, there are times when friendship demands plain speaking. Oh. Brother and I count ourselves your friends. Oh. We consider that you need help. And help you will be, whether you, whether you like it or not. Now, let's have no more nonsense. Disinfect that thoroughly. Alcohol will do. You wash yourself and put on those things. And, Mr. Wilson, you have an even greater friend. Don't you bring up that controller to me. I was not speaking of the controller. I was speaking of God. <laughs> oh, there you are. Dinner was at seven. I didn't want any, of course. But you're still all gone downstairs. Oliver, I should like some strong tea, please. Ma Mark. Martha, dear, what is it? I'll thank you to leave me alone. Ma Owen, I'm sorry. Mr. Joe. Oh, Miss George, I have something to tell your brother. Mr. Grotta, I have something to say to you. You egged him on to drink by giving him all that money at once. Wilson, the money was hid. I had no right to it. You had a moral right in the future. I wanted to exercise. What, right, Martha? I apologize, dear. <laughs> I'm so glad. Look here, Jones. Your honor's brought bad news. There's typhoid on one or some more island. Of epidemic proportions, I'm afraid. Oh, dear God. Owen, um, I'll pack for you. Yes, yeah, take these. I'll get my ticket. Yes. If it spreads to the other island. The enchanted isles of the eastern sea. Small powers. I first. Carla, the next. Jones, you may have to be ruthless inoculating those natives. I appreciated the difficulties when I chose my life's work. I beg your pardon. Very close, Jones. Where, where do these come from? Yeah, maybe they'll fit the next dummy that stops up here. Wilson, get out. Do you hear me? Get out. I'm getting out all right in tomorrow's boat. You know what? I'm not going to be made a laughing stock of. Now look here, Wilson. Who's been making a laughing stock of you? That sister of yours. She's got me developing a case of nerves. At the moment, oh. there is nothing of less importance than your nerves. Well, what, sir? Be quiet. I point on one of Thumbo and extremely serious. Oh, it's a long contrary. I shall miss your company, but you can't have everything. And what I want now is peace. Peace comes from within. You put a sock in there. I was brought up on that. Yes. Mr. Jones has always tried to help you. Oh, it was his duty, wasn't it? To a fellow man, a fellow Englishman in distress, no more. Now we have a duty for you. I serve my time. You're one of us here, and you're needed. Leap into an epidemic. <coughs> yeah. Now, see here, Wilson, these natives are going to have to be forced to cooperate. I could do with a man there, you know. Me? Yes. Yeah, no, he'd rather say sauce to the ear. I don't think so. After all, you are a man. Aren't you? Well, what about it? Thank you. Hey, it's gone. All right, I'm going to. Okay. I'll go. I'll go in my brother's place. But you can't go alone. Mr. Wilson is coming. He can't go in the state, is he? Yes, I can go. I can. Miss George is taking her brother's place.
Mr. Wilson. You're not drunk now? No. And you won't come? With you? <laughs> no. After all, there's no reason why you should come. It is my job. I can go. and monument over graves. In the old belief, a man's soul is in his shadow. And if your shadow fall on graves, the dead come up alive. And we all Superstitious die. nonsense. Jolan, Jolan. Nightingale must have felt when she landed in the Crimea. Inspired. I shall begin the inoculation at once. Here, here. Diam. Diam, diam. Well, our stitching time saves nine. Diam. It's unpleasant, I know, but so are most things. But if your own good, ready? Oh! Come back! Come back! Oh, Mr. Wilson, tell me to come back. Foolish children. Oh, here's Albert. Albert. Tell your people to come back at once for their inoculations. No, Nonya. Yes, but this fever is mine. Please, Nonya. The fever is your fault, they think. Mine? And mine. The punishment from heaven for deserting my father's gods for years. Albert, you haven't reverted, have you? It is better you would go back now. he was doing instead of meeting us. I here. beg your pardon. I leave them alone for tonight. They're in a panic. There's half the village dying in its tracks. If they think their grandfather's idols are going to help me, it's much better let them. It's my duty Our to... Our duty is to shoot this stuff in their arms. Can't you understand? Their religion is just as sacred to them as yours is to you. It's idolatry! Tell them to remove that thing! 
Henry, will you kindly do as I ask? No! And neither will you. Are you going to follow my orders? Or are you not? Yes, I'm not. Indeed. Take all that stuff off the table, everything else, put it in the dispensary. How, Master? Shot in the arm, same as you. Look at me, fresh as a daisy. This will fix you. But Monia Jones says I was never touch spirits to her. Ah, uh, nuts in me. Ah, <laughs> put your miseries to sleep. There's one gentleman in distress to another sergeant. I don't think I should mention the fact that I sneaked in this medicine to this child. So you have to hear. have just planned humanity so long as you can ride to your own private upstairs in a first-class coach. You've been drinking. Honestly, only one. Oh, Mr. Wilson. Stop sniveling, and this time you stay inside till I say you can take the air. Why? Because you need to be taken care of. Oh, you just did take care the of think of my own neck, not yours. Now you, hit the hay. Mm, what? It's American expression. It means you go to bed. It is expressive. Yeah, mm. good night. One more peep out of you, my girl, and I'll spank you. But you can't sit down. Half into the frying pan and she never turned her hair. You feel better? Feel extraordinary. Funny woman. Sergeant, you better sleep in the dispensary tonight. Dynamite around here might go off.
goodness. Mr. Wilson, you get wet through. Oh, I'm used to it. Many a night on the beach, rolling stone like me, you know. Oh, stop trolling. Do come in. Have a cup of tea. Cup of tea? Do take your wet coat off, won't you? And sit down. It's just on the boil. I can't offer you milk, I'm afraid. I never was much of a one for milk in my tea. It spoils the flavor of it. I mean, what's the point of tea if you can't taste the tea? That's just how I feel. Oh, we mustn't catch cold, must we? Those towels. Oh. I should have thanked you for being so nasty to me tonight. But you rather frightened me. Oh, did I? He was so commanding. Oh, your fault. You were stunned, isn't it? <coughs> well, Miss, uh, Miss Jones. Mr. Just thinking it's rather swank sitting down to tea in this godforsaken spot. Oh, it's not godforsaken here, Mr. Wilson. I know that now. Uh, would you mind if I smoked? No. When I come to think of it, you missionaries do a lot more good than you get credit for. I'll bet he's not such a bad fella when you get to know him. Yes, that's true. I hope you like this. You look fine. Oh, this old thing. I meant tea. <laughs> Would you mind if I told you something, Miss Jones? Well, I'd like to tell you the reason I had such you're a chip. Wilson, you're, you're, well, you're here. Help me and my child is sick. I'm so afraid. Give her to me. If the nun you was bad medicine an hour ago, isn't she now? Maybe it is different for baby. It's all right, we'll look after your kid. Oh, stop training. Yes, I know. What is it, typhoid? It may be. It's difficult to make the Rose Rush diagnosis on such dark skin. What are you going to do? Inject serum. Right in that stuff. Will you wash your hands, please? Yes, but if she should... Uh die after a shot of that. She's a headman's daughter. The acid killed her. The sticky version, know. Will you wash your hands, please? Yes, ma'am. Oh. 
Ah, it's all right, soldier. Of course it hurts. I had a tooth out once and yelled so hard, it rang the church bells a mile away. She doesn't understand English. Huh? Oh, it's never the words. It's, it's the way you see them. You have such a gift for language, Mr. Wilson. I wish I had. Oh, I don't know so much about that. If you follow me, we both did pretty well in that court. Here, here, can I help you? That was all the fault of the controller egging you on. Now, 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 Mr. Groyd is lonely, that's all. Who isn't? Give me my child. Ow. Give me my child. Give me my child. Look here, the man you're trying to make her well. She will kill her. Don't be an ass, Albert. She's a brave woman to try and save her. Knowing that if she did die now, those monkeys of yours would blame us and run wild. Hey, I could kill you and a few more with this pea shooter, and then what? You'd get us in the end. Give me my child. She's better off here. You'll get back to where you came from. You have spoken to one. You can shoot only a few of us, and then you are finished. Kids playing games. Did your brother ever march around the house walloping a drum? I did. I'm sorry I got you into this. Blast it, woman's place it in the home. I say, don't you start laughing at me now. Oh, I never have, Mr. Wilson. I never thought you were laughing. I'd have been used to that. I was the fat boy at school. Used to call me Jack Spratt. Jack Spratt could eat no fat. His wife could eat no lean. I, I mean, I, I mean, I didn't mean that. It's all right. They'd keep the platter clean. Anyway. Let me tell you, that argument that two can live as cheaply as one, so much twaddle. I'm not prepared to admit that, Mr. Wilson. It's a question of household management. Yes, with a manager getting all the salary. Does that mean you've been married? What? Me married? What's uh, the matter with it? Everything. How do you know if you've never been there? You've only got to look at the papers. Where do you come from in England? Kent. I come from Bucks. Well, they're here. I'd like to tell you something. I started to tell you once before this evening, Mr. Reed. Um, it's the reason I carried such a chip on my shoulder about your preaching. Give me a hand. See, uh, at home in England, I wanted to marry the local barmaid and become the landlord of the Fox and Rabbit Inn. My father and I had quite a scene. See, uh, 
My father was the vicar of Little Hazard. Bugs. Oh. My father drank himself to death. They're both looking ten years younger. <laughs> yes, God moves in his mysterious way, his wonders to perform, and of course my sister is a very determined woman. I doubt whether after that night with her on the island, Edward ever had a chance. I suppose a woman scorned is a vessel of wrath. They are both sailing home for their honeymoon. To England. Nine thousand miles away. Now, now, gentlemen, it's half time. Sorry, gentlemen. Act to Parliament. Well, that's one for the fox and rabbit. The last pink with me, landlord. Thank you, sir, no. Never touch it. Right, oh. Good night, sir. Good night, Mr. Taylor. Good night, Mr. Robinson. Good night, sir. Good night, madam. Good night, ladies. Good night, sir. Good night, Good night, Good night, Good night, Mr. Wilson. Good night, Sir John. Hope the ground's not too hard to house in the morning. Thank you. Good night. Helen, I don't like my girls to be familiar with the customers. Josephine, hurry up with the glasses. We mustn't waste the electric light. Well, it's tiring, but a prosperous day. Mother, isn't that dress of yours cut a bit on the low side? It's all right, you know, but... That's <laughs> well, no laughing matter. You're tired, dear. Good night, Helen. Good night, Josephine. Good night, sir. Oh, well, so to bed. Yep, bye. <laughs> <laughs>